Well, hello there everyone. UXW Bill here with you once again. I'm just making a short little video to let all of you know out there in YouTube land that I am most definitely both of still alive and despite Google's best efforts, still making videos for your perusal and enjoyment. However, I have been busy with a lot of other things lately, not the least of which is a silver Buick that has, at least temporarily speaking, laid down and died. There may just be a video about that in the future, but one hasn't been created just yet. And of course, numerous other things as well. I do have a number of videos that happen to be in the works at this particular moment, but I have not had an opportunity to finish editing them. So here's a short little video to tide you over. It's actually going to have to be a short little video, although as you all know, brevity is not my style because I am just about to run out of videotape in this camcorder. And you will also notice that this is a departure from my recent exclusive high definition productions in that this is a standard definition video that I'm actually recording with the DCR TRV27 Mini DV Handycam. If you look at my screen here, you'll see that I have an Elmol 3 video up, and this video features a machine that he called the Derp Top Server. He actually ended up doing a revival on this machine, replacing the power supply, I believe, and also installing a new motherboard. A motherboard that I, in fact, had actually turned him on to a VIA-based motherboard with a uh, low-power VIA CPU. He brought that machine back to life, and it actually reminded me of something that I had started to work on, a computer project of my own that ran into difficulties and that ultimately ended up going into uh, hibernation and storage over at the Roche Palace. Here's a look at it. As you can see, I've got a nice little uh, mini ITX form factor case here. I've got an empty three and a half inch drive bay because no mini ITX motherboard that I'm aware of actually has a floppy connector and I don't typically put memory card readers in the systems. There's a couple of uh, front panel audio connections, two USB ports, an optical drive, although those these days those are getting to be an old school forgotten thing of the past, and a nice little power button with a translucent ring around it that illuminates to indicate when the power was on. Now if you're thinking that this is a nice looking case, you're absolutely right. Unfortunately there was one thing about it that was not very nice at all, and that was the power supply. The power supply for this system was an absolute piece of crap, to put it very bluntly. It never worked reliably from the time that this case was new, and given I could have RMA'd it, but given that I would have had to take the whole shebang apart and find a place to stash all the pieces safely while I was doing so, it just didn't seem like a very productive option. What I discovered is that the original power supply from Foxconn seemed to be overheating. It would shut off at random times, and the only way I got it to run consistently was actually to hotwire its fan to the 12 volt side of the power supply's output, attempting to run it from 5 and 7 volts. If you're not familiar with the 7 volt trick, you can look that up online was not productive in keeping it running. Well, at the time, I did not know to what form factor that power supply belonged, and given that I wanted to turn this system into something productive, I turned to eBay to try and find something, anything, that would happen to fit this computer. And as you can see, I did not come up with a very good option. Not only does this power supply not actually fit this case at all, it's also a noisy piece of crap. In fact, the only thing that it had going for it was the fact that it seemed to work, and it seemed to work reliably. Let's go ahead and pop the cover on this system and have a closer look at what's going on. As you can clearly see, the key word with regard to this system's case is definitely cozy. The system is based on an ASUS ITX220 motherboard featuring the Intel 945 chipset and an Intel Celeron 220 microprocessor. Now you might be wondering to yourself what Elmol3's video has to do with any of this particular system build. Well, it has everything to do with the power supply. All of these years later, I finally know what kind of power supply I needed to get. What it was known as, it's a TFX power supply. And I actually have a replacement here from eBay. Now, Allied Power Supplies are not the world's most famous brand, but I have used and come across these in a number of systems in the past, and they seem entirely credible and perfectly reliable and functional to me. I've certainly had no serious problems with them. Now, I've gone ahead and hooked this system up to a miniature IBM keyboard with a built-in track point. I've plugged it into power and hooked up a display just to give you a brief demonstration of how incredibly loud this power supply that's in there right now happens to be. 
and as you can see it definitely has a very clumsy fit. You can also see that while I have standards they're pretty low. I definitely hacked in the uh, mounting points for this uh, power supply to fit and it's not even in there quite straight. It's a little bit crooked. Well, let's go ahead and power it up because I am running short on videotape here. Listen to all that noise. The only good thing is, as previously stated, it does work. <laughs> and the CMOS battery is definitely dead, so I will have to seek out another one of those as well. It's a pity I don't have one handy because in order to install a power supply in this system, I'll actually have to take it almost completely apart. It's one of the big disadvantages of working on these really small form factor computers. So it'd be nice to kill two birds with one stone, but luckily I can at least get at the CR2032 battery in this system for later replacement. Let's go ahead and fit a power supply to this thing and see if it does what it should do and hopefully just how much quieter it's going to be. And there's that word again, cozy. Well, I'm back, and let me take just a moment to say that that was not the slam dunk success that I thought it would be. Apparently, this case uses a slightly non-standard power supply design. Even though I went to the Foxconn Channel website, and I happened to look it up, and their own description of the case, this is the RS-233, claims that it uses a TFX power supply. But if you look at what I've got going on in here, it's certainly better than what I had. And heaven knows it's quieter, but it's still just not quite what it ought to be. So if you've got any thoughts about this and what kind of a power supply might go in here, I'd certainly love to hear them, because I cannot find a proper replacement power supply for this case anywhere. And I'd really like to use it because it's a nice case. Feel free to leave a comment if you have one, and if you're wondering about that noise you've heard in the background, well, read the video description.